what's the point of doing it? Does that not invalidate well, free will? No, there's a, there's a um, uh, fallacious uh, reasoning there. Just because God knows something, it doesn't mean God causes you to act. Those are two different logical just, propositions. Just to give an example, you know, if I, if does, I watch the, my... Does the Christian God know everything that's going to happen? Yes, I believe so. Mm. But mm. It, if I watch my goddaughter uh, from across the room, oftentimes I can tell because I know her personality quite well, I know how she's going to act before she does so. Well, if it's true that God knows every hair on our heads, if he knows us so much more than I know my goddaughter, then it's not surprising that he would know how we might act. That doesn't mean that he's causing it or controlling okay. it. Julian. <laughs> Do you have a view on this? That, uh, yeah, I don't think it's a problem. I think the problem. You don't of think evil's, it's a problem. No, I think the problem of evil is a problem. I no, think the, God's the, foreknowledge the, isn't a problem because why, why it, isn't God's foreknowledge a problem? Because you can know if you if you're God, all that means is you can know what someone will come to do of their own free will. The fact that you can see it in advance doesn't mean that it wasn't their own free will which caused them to act it. So I actually I, right. people often think this is a problem, but I I really don't You've think it is. It. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, unfortunately. Okay, so yeah, what can fun. I say? Us, us together. Fun. I was just going to say coming in on this. Uh, notion of free will. This isn't just a problem for theological discourse. Brilliant. This is a problem for atheist discourse no, yeah. as well. well if we take a biological well reductionist account of the evolution of human psychology, mm. we, we risk losing a kind mm. of atheist conception of free will, yeah. which obviously ties us back that's into the kind point. of the yep. political yeah. ideological if, if believe, ideological that's, that's when science steps too far, in your opinion, yeah. um, out, out with its remit. Or well, if, I, we, if we believe in a naturalistic world, and a material world, yeah. then the self is lost. All we are is a collection of cells. Um, we, we lose the personal identity. We, we lose all, what, what actually makes us human. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. I think that free will does that. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK. It is overstating it, but I would, what I would agree is this. There are challenges. I think that there is a kind of strand of kind of overconfident atheism which thinks that mm. science will lead us to the promised land. Yeah. Mm. But it certainly does raise in questions about our inherent ability to sort of even know the truth, our ability to, to have free will and so forth. Now, I don't think these things blow it out of the water. They're not unanswerable. I don't think it makes the self an illusion. But there are difficulties there, and I think that an honest atheism needs to accept that the scientific worldview is not entirely comfortable for everything that atheists believe either. Is the, uh, Satish, is the, the Hindu um, conception of um, a greater power is that more, in your mind, um, compatible with science? It's a completely integrated experience. Mm. Um, it's of no consolation to me to be convinced that, yes, God exists intellectually. That's of no value to me whatsoever. Um, a belief changes from moment to moment as you learn things. The only consolation, the only thing that would satisfy would be an experience. And the mystics, if you take the mystics out of the picture, mm the whole God argument becomes just intellectual cogitation. The mystics had experiences, and so our approach is, what do we do to recreate that experience in our own awareness? Yeah. And the, the teaching is that when that experience happens, then suddenly there is a, an expanded connectivity with all of life and with all of creation. Yeah. And so it becomes a knowing rather than a, a computational deduction. Mm. Some more, some more hands up. Point. Sorry, Margaret. Sorry, I just wanted to make Go that on. little There's point. Some hands in the audience. Sorry. 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 We've touched a, a few times on evidence. Well, um, don't we go a lot on things that we simply know? How do you know that your nearest and dearest love you? How do you know that? It's because you do know it. You can't put that in a test tube and you can't intellectualize that. You know to a certain extent by the way that they behave towards you. But that's a knowing that uh, the point that Satish was making it's a knowing and that's what people of faith have and I don't think it makes any difference whether you're, you're Hindu or a Muslim or a Christian or a Baha'i it's that knowing it's that intimacy and that knowledge of God and that's what we have and you you simply can't intellectualize it Lady and we could argue all day and it would never make any difference. Lady Lady. Um, I would just like to say, um, I actually don't believe in uh, miracles. I actually went to Lourdes and it, I found it ever so depressing, but mm. I do actually have a faith and I do believe part of having faith is actually believing. You, you, you know, I don't believe uh, with respect atheism. And so I do feel that faith is very important to me. Is atheism a belief system as much as any? Is it a, uh, a fern? I mean, um, do we all need to believe something? Uh, <laughs> 
I think, I mean, as I, going back to our earlier discussion, I think that, yes, I would argue that atheism is a belief system as much as... So that's your belief system. system? That's my... I'm an atheist, a lifelong atheist. I grew up in a scientific household. It's... I'm, I, Listen, it's a belief system to Atheism me. and science are not linked, necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, touche. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, I, I say that because I, I obviously I work on um, communicating evolutionary science, so I, I always have to be quite careful about what I say because people are always concerned about what agenda they might have. Um, the, the, the point I'd like to make really about whether or not we need religion is there are, there are a couple of ways we could cut this up. One, we could argue that there is an evolutionary reason for having religious beliefs. There are two ways we could look at it. We could, we could either think that religion is a byproduct of other processes. As there is an evolutionary reason for, for love. It's linking, it's bonding, it's uh, uh, having a strong in-group, it's, yep. it's for breeding, it's for security. It, 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 could, it could be a byproduct, and some of what Julian was referring to earlier is, is seeing religion as an evolutionary byproduct. It could be that it provides us with an adaptive advantage, i.e., being able to work in social groups, mm. having systems of laws and ethical functions. That doesn't tell us anything about whether God exists or not. Mm -hmm. right. All it tells us is that there is obviously clearly religion mm -hmm. in society in a way that has existed in human, human hominid society for quite a long time. That's the fact that we deal From with. From when? Oh, that's, that's a thorny <laughs> question. You know Did the, the Neanderthals have uh, a God consciousness? Is oh. there any thought, no. evidence? It's, it's, that's, that's it. That's it. There's, there's, there's evidence of early um, kind of prehistory uh, Mesopaleolithic, I think, um, evidence for kind of religious practice in kind of loose inverted commas. We know that clearly it's played a, a part of human society from early human history and all the way through recorded history. The other thing we know is that it is one of the defining kind of categories of worldview for most people on the planet now. We have to deal with that, whether we're atheists or not atheists. We have to accept that we live in a world of difference. We have to understand that we live in a pluralistic society. And we have to find ways to actually engage with each other in a way that we can communicate in an open dialogue. Okay, can I... uh, let me, there were some hands up. Let me take a couple of uh, points from the audience. You said, yes, hello. Uh, wait, well, your microphone's coming. <coughs> microphone's coming. Just Quick in, point, go on. In relation to the freedom of will, I mean, God, 1400. Uh, in the Islamic, uh, uh, in the Quran, mm. uh, mentioned that people like the atheists are going to come out and they're going to say things, let them prove it. So this is being predicted that people oh, will come very clever, <laughs> they're going to come and they... Uh, the, the other thing, the, 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 uh, the re revelation of the, of the Quran will challenge science. That's in the Quran 1400 years ago. There's a lot of that and stuff also was the in miracle, ancient Greek the philosophy. Miracle, the, mir yeah. the, 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 the miraculous birth of Christ will believe in it. And also the Quran is the greatest miracle throughout history. And atheists cannot challenge that because they can't even discuss it in Arabic. OK. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all go home. That's the God of the Gaps again. Yeah, uh, it, it is, and I think this is this is what we need to be very careful about. And certainly in my field of interest around evolutionary theory, God did it. We we have to recognise that it's often it's this isn't a conversation about mm. science. This is a conversation about theological debates about literalist interpretations of text. <laughs> yeah. It's nothing to do with the science. I don't have to talk about evidence to do with evolutionary theory because actually you're having a conversation that is intra to your own faith perspective. Yeah. Uh, let me, let, well, let's but let's other me, people from your own faith perspective would probably challenge your stance. Let, 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 let a quick gentleman there in a jacket just at the edge. Um, yeah. Um, I think the issue is that a lot of the discussion that's taking place is, is putting God within a sort of a religious group context. In actual fact, like the gentleman over there said, that you don't actually have to belong to a religious group to believe in God. Um, sort of, you know, the, the deist sort of thought system from the Enlightenment didn't necessarily belong to Christianity or Islam or Judaism. Mm. It, it acknowledged the fact that, you know, God is an entity. It doesn't have to be he, she, anything like that. It's an entity. Um, you know, I believe in God, but I don't, I, well, I'm, I'm a Christian, but I, I, I see the two as separate. Mm -hmm. um, and I think yeah. that that's a big part of the debate. We need to take the idea of God 
away from the I thought the you were going to say I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in God. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, you C of E people. Honestly, um, <laughs> it's a good point, though, because... Not being serious. Making, Alistair. You're making a very good point. But, I mean, yeah. I believe in God. Mm. I'm not actually a very religious person. You're not. And, and, no, I'm not. Uh, but I, I believe there's a God. It means a lot to what me. What drives so people... in terms of practices, I'm not really very religious. And I think I, I'm very concerned that we're simply eliding, you know, bringing together as if they're the same thing, yeah. believing in God, religion. Organised religion. Actually, you know, yes. I think we just need to do keep these at some distance. It makes a much better discussion. You've written a, a very, very good book, if I may say so, about what you believe is a decline in atheism. Um, what as, but we are 13th, is it 13th most uh, atheistic, yeah. mm -hmm. heathenistic? Mm -hmm. Out of 40. Out of yes. 40 yes. countries yeah. in the world. What has and what is driving people and what does drive people to atheism? Is it the examples of religion that they, you would describe well, as let me tell extreme? You what I, let me tell you what I think it is. I think the rise of religious fundamentalism is the biggest driver for atheism in the modern world. Really? And uh, I, I want to put my hand up and say, maybe I'm contributing to that. Maybe it's part of my thing. And that You're not a religious well, fundamentalist. No, but maybe we need to think very carefully. Maybe religious people need to, in effect, say, maybe we are causing this problem. I think, I think that's a very simple thing to do. Secondly, I think there's also this, this question of the cultural authority of science, which we've talked about quite a lot. And I, I think that scientists do need to make it clear that science is theistically neutral. I don't say it's anti-religion, I don't say it's pro-religion, it's science. It just is what it is and says what happens. Absolutely, science is science, it's great. But when it starts behaving as if it has answers on religious things, I mean, you know, it, it, it actually damages itself. I think that needs to be said. We need to purify science and rescue it from being used as a weapon by uh, either religious or anti-religious fundamentalists. Ideologues. Yeah, I think yeah. that's right. I mean, yeah. Thomas Huxley made that point years ago. He said science commits suicide when it adopts a creed. And I'm, I'm really asking, can we purify science of these ideological elements and get back to what it used to be? Can you purify religion of these uh, ideological elements which uh, make people say, well, that's ridiculous, the world wasn't created in... Uh, in six, it's not 6,000 years I think the old. ideological elements in, in today's religion that most people are worried about is the propensity towards violence. And I think that that's a big one we've got to face yeah. up to. Yeah, you I, know. Think, I just I, think that my old theology, theology teacher uh, at college started out with something which, recommend, which, which echoed with what you said, Father. Um, she, she began her first lecture by saying, if we believe that God is truth, then... Theology is a journey into truth, and there is therefore no question which cannot be asked, and there is no difficult question which may be ducked. Now, I followed that teaching, and it led me away from the church. She wouldn't like what I've gone to, but she would approve of the method. <laughs> that journey into light and truth is the way to go. Adam, do you think that uh, those uh, extremists of any religious stripe are a genuine threat to those uh, of, of religions who have, uh, you know, I don't know, mainstream views? I mean, do you, well, do you think, do speaking, you think it's a, is it a worry for you? Yeah, I, I think speaking as a Muslim, um, I've seen my own faith, Islam, being hijacked by extremists. Um, I, I don't know if it justifies them, you know, Muslims becoming um, atheists, but certainly they do contribute them becoming apostates. There is a, an irrational... Abandonment sort of, of faith. Yeah, yeah. the abandonment uh, of faith. And, mm. and in some cases, they're, they're justified because they're, what they're actually rejecting is not Islam, but they're rejecting a perverted version of Islam. And so very much so, I, I would uh, agree that religious people, extremists, are contributing to uh, uh, anti-religious sentiments and also contributing to becoming sort of atheists. I, I think... But, but what, what I would also say is that what also supports religious fundamentalism is extreme uh, uh, militant atheism. That, that is also a, a problem as well. Bec uh, the, what the encounter that I have um, reading sort of militant atheists is that... But, well, Adam, you've, you've made a very Sorry. balanced point. We have to leave it there. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time. And thank you all very much indeed for taking part. <laughs>